is so good. Hey guys, it's Craig here. And today we're going to talk about making your own wine. Did this many years ago on YouTube and I decided to do it again because that video is very old. So let's give it a shot and show you how easy it is to do this. Now, why would you want to make wine, your own wine, when you can just go to the store and buy it? Well, in some countries, things are expensive, like beer and wine and other alcoholic beverages. And so I don't think I can get a bottle of wine for any less than $10 here in Canada, <clears throat> which isn't bad. Um, of course, it goes up from there, the prices, but um, I can make my own wine for about $2 a bottle. Okay, so, and it's good wine. Now, when I first started, to decided to make this my own wine. I did it because my parents made their own wine and the taste, I couldn't believe how good it tastes. But now they went to a place uh, where you go and you tell them what, what you want and then they put it all together for you and brew it and ferment it. Then you go back about a month and a half later and a month later and you bottle it and then you've got wine. So then you bring it home and it costs about a hundred bucks, maybe sometimes a little bit more depending on the price of the wine kit. It might even cost 150 depending on, like I said, depending on price of the kit that you buy, which is what we're going to use to make this wine. Now, I don't want to hear it about, you know, making it from fresh grapes. I don't have a vineyard in my backyard and I really don't have a way of accessing grapes very easily. So this is the second best way to do it and it's the easiest way to do it. The wine is superb. It really is. But look at how clear that is. Absolutely gorgeous. Just crystal clear. So let's see what we've got. Mm. It's much cheaper to make your own wine and here's the stuff that you'll need. We're going to use this wine kit which I'll show you in a minute. I have a fermenter here. This is a fermenting bucket with a lid and an airlock. This is a 23 liter. It goes up to, I guess it goes up to 30 or whatever liter. So it's over five gallons. And uh, this is my wine fermenter. It has to be clean, has to be sanitized, which we will do in a moment. And there you have it. You're also going to need a, a, you know, a stirring utensil. I use this little stir paddle here that goes with that. And at this stage, that's all you need. Okay. Later on, you're going to need, um, one of these things this is a carboy. This one happens to be glass, but you can get plastic ones and it has to be clean as well. You will need some uh, siphoning equipment for siphoning the wine out of one vessel into another. And I will show you that when the time comes and you'll need something to put the wine in when it's finished. And well, you can get a bunch of wine bottles, go to a bar, go to a pub, go to a restaurant, ask them if they've got any wine bottles they're getting. They're only going to throw them away or recycle them anyway. Right. If you get bigger wine bottles, my son found these, these are 1.5 liter, then you don't have to deal with as many bottles. You know, you can just make 13 big bottles of wine instead of 28 to 30 small bottles of wine. These have screw on lids and you know, you can get the ones, the corks, you can use uh, corks, you get the corks. And of course you have to have a little machine that will allow you to put the corks into the bottles. And that is a thing that you can get very cheaply. Once you make the initial investment, um, and if you like wine, you can make any type of wine, you pretty much any type you like. Okay, sweet wines, dry wines, red wines, white wines, pink wines, flavored wines, all kinds of stuff. Okay, so this is the, this is the simplest way to do it. Now, let's take a look at the kit itself. This is a Bergame. I'm not, a, I'm not French, Bergame. Is that how you say it? It's a bergamot. I don't know how you, I don't know how you pronounce this, but this is this particular one is a slightly lighter colored red than some of the other ones. This one I'm drinking right now is a California red. Um, I, there's all kinds of different selections. Complete home brewing is what the store is called where I buy my wine kits. Complete home brewing. You can look them up and um, they have tons of these and they do all the brewing and stuff too. So if you live in like, that area of those guys, you can go and talk to them. Now, let's see what is inside of one of these babies. Let's just get this so we can see. Okay, so that's what we've got. Now, comes with a package and this thing has stuff in it, little envelopes of stuff. There's the yeast that goes in, I'm going to have to open it up anyway, so let's go ahead and do that. Okay, I'll set that aside just for a moment. 
we'll get all this out and show you what's in here. Okay. Okay, so we have instructions and these instructions are easy. If you follow them, you will not have any problems. They're so easy to follow. You just do exactly what it says in here and you're good to go. So those are those. Uh, we've got our yeast. Okay. Uh, here we have some bentonite. We'll talk about that in a moment. We have some potassium sorbate and some sodium metabisulfite. Okay. And then these little packages here you add at the end for clearing. So for clearing the wine. Um, that's it. So all these things happen at different stages. Okay. So let's get those out of the way. And we're, gonna, we're only going to use a couple of these today, but I'll be following up on this for you in another video once we get to the next stage. Now, the fermenter has to be cleaned and sanitized. Now, a lot of home brewers watch my videos, so they're like, yeah, Craig, we know it's got to be clean and sanitized. We know how to use, you know, but some people are watching this for the first time. They don't know how to brew beer or wine. So we've got to make sure we cater to those people. So... I have some star sand here. Now, a lot of people who make wine use sodium metabisulfite to sanitize their equipment and then they rinse it under you know, water to rinse that off because you have to rinse that stuff off. Um, because I brew beer, and most people who do brew beer, we use something called star sand, which is this here. And you mix it up the way it tells you to with water and it's a sanitizer and you don't have to rinse it off. So that's what the beauty of it. So I've got some in this in this basin here and we're just going to pour it into our fermenter and this is an acid-based solution which will kill all the germs it has to be sanitized or things could go wrong okay you don't want your wine to get infected the only thing that you want to infect your wine with is the yeast that you're going to put in that's the only infection you want in it okay you don't want stray things floating around in in the air getting into it. So we're just going to snap this on and star sand requires 30 seconds contact time. So we're just going to shake it all around. All the surfaces are wet inside there and that's all it requires. Okay. So um, it's 30 seconds. It's still going to be wet in 30 seconds. So that's what's called contact time. There you have it. This stuff creates a foam. Don't worry about it. It's harmless and it will go away. Okay. It's not like soap or anything like that. It's not going to hurt anything. We're just going to sit that over there for now. And as they say in the home brewing world, don't fear the foam. Okay. So we're just going to pour that back into our little basin here. Along with some of the foam, but some of it's going to stay in the fermenter. See? That's fine. Do not worry about that. Okay. Now, our little stir paddle here, we're just going to inundate it with some sanitizer. Like that. Um, that's good. See, that's all wet now and sanitized and ready to go. Now, we have to find a way to um, fill this with water. So you got to use a sink or a hose or something. I have a fill hose here that I use. This has been sanitized and had sanitizer all run through it and everything. It's clean. So that's what we're going to use to fill it up with water when we're ready to do that. Okay. The last thing in the box, of course, is a bladder. You can see that from a, from a, I got a little spy cam up there. Um, it's, it's a bladder, plastic bladder full of wine or sorry, grape concentrate. Okay. Um, some you can get more expensive wine kits that have less, that, it, that don't have concentrate. It's actually the full five gallons of grape juice and you don't add any water to it. Um, they're more expensive, um, but you can get those. And if you're a real wine connoisseur, you might prefer those over these, but I'm fine with these. You just have to, to rehydrate it. So um, what you do with this thing, you don't take the bag out. I'd love to take it out and show you, but uh, it's really better if you just don't do that. What I do is I just, this takes a little bit of a sculpturing here. You rip, rip these off. Okay, so you don't want stuff in the way. And just look for the corner where this thing, usually it's, they've got it set where it's in a corner. And then just take a, 
some sort of a thing here, a knife, and just cut. Careful not to cut the bag. That wouldn't be good. I dropped one of these down the stairs once and the bag broke. So I had to brew it like that, right that minute. Otherwise the wine would have went all over. There, we can just get rid of that. See, so you're creating a, a way for you to bring this up and over the corner of the box like that. And we can pour the wine stuff into here. Now, before we do that, we need some hot, hot water. So let's get some hot water from over here. It's warm water, hot water, it's either one, it's fine. It's just so that we can dissolve the first thing that we're gonna put in here. So we'll get some of that. You, you'll be able to see it's not, you know, it's not very important how much you put in. Just a couple inches. You know, something like that. I know you guys can't really see that. I'll hold it up in a sec. See, just, just that much. It's okay, it doesn't matter. All right. And you grab, the first thing that you're gonna put in here is bentonite. Bentonite is like, a, it's a clay. Well, it's actually volcanic ash. And it, what it does is it, it dissolves and it, it attaches onto um, particles, solid particles that are in the grape juice. And it grabs onto them and because it's heavy, it pulls them down to the bottom of the fermenter. So it's the first stage in clearing your wine, getting your wine to be nice and clear. So we're gonna add this right now. And it doesn't have a smell. You gotta do this kind of slow um, so that you don't get clumps. So we just give this a little stir. There we go. Now, you're gonna to wanna to stir this. Whoops. Oh well. You're gonna to wanna to stir this for about a minute to make sure that there's no clumps because it will act like clay and it will clump up. So you can see that. You can also see that on the front here, I have a little thermometer, a stick on thermometer, so I can kind of monitor the temperature. You wanna ferment this at about 72 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, it's 21 Celsius. Brown in there, it's not too fussy. Could be a little cooler, could be a little warmer. Wine isn't like beer, it's not quite as um, temperamental when it comes to uh, temperature. At least I don't think, I've never had any issues with, with, you know, slightly different temperatures. So I think that's, I think that's good. I think, you know, you can always do this, tip it around and give it a good old. Mm -hmm just to make sure that's all dissolved. And I think we've got it, right? Now, the next stage in the game is to get your concentrate into the wine, into the fermenter. So you can, you gotta take this off with a little screwdriver or something like that, or, you know, add this to your list of gadgets. It's a little thing that you can use to take the lids off these things. First thing you're gonna do is, oh, it smells so good. Mmm, it's so good. It's good stuff. Very high quality grape juice. Okay, over there. And now, very carefully, because we've designed the box in such a way, and hang on to the bag too so it doesn't come out, and just bring it up, and here we go. There we are. And don't get any on your clothes. Now, there you go, there's the bag. Okay, so what, what we're gonna do with this is we're gonna add a little bit of warm water to this so that we can rinse it out and get the rest of the uh, goodness out of it. This is the end of my hose here. here. So you just put a little warm water in there and you just give it a shake like that. Okay. 
get that out of the way now. And that's it. Beautiful. Done with that. Give this a good old stir. Let's move this over here. Yes, we are well on our way. It smells nice, it's nice and fresh. Okay, now the last thing we need to do right now is top it up to 20, of course I can't see it from over here, 23 liters. Okay, so about there. So we grab our fill hose. Never find the end of that thing. We want cold water now because we've got mostly warm water in here and you wanna just you know, get it to a temperature of around 72 Fahrenheit or 21 Celsius. 20 Celsius, 21, something. Somewhere like that. It'll work out. If you feel the side of the fermenter and it's a bit warm, then it's too warm. Uh, if it feels cold, then it's too cold. If it feels sort of a little bit teeny bit cold, then it's probably, that's the right temperature, right? Get a thermometer or something or, you know, make sure you can, you can check it. But after you've done it a few times, you can go on to about here. I can see it from, this fermenter's kind of see-through, so. Sometimes I fill it a little bit less just because, well, you get a slight bit more flavor out of it, but yeah, we'll go, we'll go all the way. That's about right there, I think. I'm pretty sure we got, let me see. One, two, three, yep. There we go. Feels good to me, give it a stir. I'm guessing the temperature is probably all right. It feels to me like it's at around 70 degrees. It'll get to the room temperature. I've done this so many times, I can just tell that it's, it's okay. And now if you, if you have a cold, if you're brewing in a cold area, like a basement or something where it's a little bit cooler, like in the 60s, then what you can do is get one of these, I'll just, brew belt, okay? It's uh, tangled over there. There we are. Yeah, you just put this around the, uh, around the fermenter you plug it in and it draws about 20 watts and it will help to keep the wine warm. Okay, so that's what, that's what you can do there. So we're done with this. And basically all we need to do now is just make sure it's good and stirred. And then the last thing we have to put in at this stage is the yeast. Now, this is gonna ferment for about a week to 10 days and then we're going to transfer it to a carboy, but that will be in the next part of this video and we'll deal with these other packages. Um, the potassium sorbate, the chemicals I mentioned earlier, the sodium metabisulfite, what it does is when the fermentation is done, um, you put it in and it kills the yeast and it kills any other bacteria that might be in the wine. Basically, it stops the fermentation and that's it. The wine will no longer ferment from that point on. The potassium sorbate will prevent the wine from fermenting further. You see, the sodium metabisulfite doesn't stay in the wine. It just does its thing when it goes in. About 24 hours later, it sort of dissipates and it's no longer there. So your wine is again vulnerable to fermentation. So the potassium sorbate, you put that in to preserve the wine and stop any stray yeasts coming in and eating any residual sugars that might be left in the wine. Um, not only that, but if you're going to back sweeten the wine, which basically means um, after the fermentation is done, you might want to add a sweetener to it or a flavor pack, as they call it, or an F pack, uh, to give the wine a flavor and make it sweet. And if you don't kill, if you don't prevent uh, further fermentation, then that sugar in that F pack will ferment, possibly, 
uh, with stray yeast in the air, and that's not good. You don't want that. So you, these two these two things are going to help preserve the wine and stop it from fermenting, and that's it. All right. So we deal with those later. And of course, as I mentioned earlier, these two little clear packages here. I don't know where the other one went. Oh, there it is. These are uh, some, one of these is like a that's like a um, gelatin or something like that. And it'll help to make your wine super clear, just like you saw mine was over there. Okay, so that kind of explains things. But for now, all we're doing is adding the yeast that comes with the kit. So I give it another final stir. And while it's going around like that, you don't have to do this, but I just do because it spreads it evenly. all over the surface of the wine. And you'll get used to the smell of this. It's the smell of the beginnings of a great wine. Get it all out of there. All the goodies. Okay. There. That's it. Sometimes you, you've had your hands in star sand, so you know they're clean. You can just get all that in there. I know people are going to complain about that, but I've never had a problem, so just Leave me alone. <laughs> okay. You don't stir this from here on in. It smells kind of putrid a little bit. It's a weird smell. Where's the lid? There we are. Remember we sanitized this earlier. And we just um, snap that on like that. And the airlock is to prevent any air from getting into the fermenter. So um, it will let out gas. Because while the wine is fermenting, you're, it's creating carbon dioxide. Don't tell, you know, Al Gore or anybody, but you're creating carbon dioxide when you, when you brew this up. So um, that has to escape. So that has to come out, but you don't want anything to get in. So it's like a one-way valve. And we just fill it up with cold water. Some people put vodka and things. I've never done that. I've never, in my 30 years of making beer and stuff, I've never put... Just cold water. It's fine. You can put sanitizer in here if you're, you know, and I've done, I've done that. But uh, there's no, you know, this is, that's it. This is just going to, um, sometimes when you're making beer, it can flare up and get all inside the airlock and everything. That's when it's good to have sanitizer in the airlock. But this isn't going to do that. Okay. So there you have it. You're, you've made wine. And uh, now this is going to ferment for about... Mm, well, the instructions say, I think they say eight days. Um, and then you're going to take a hydrometer reading. That's another tool that you might want to invest in. You don't have to, okay? Um, but you might want to. And I have a very detailed video on here on YouTube, how to use one of these things. It's so detailed that it's like half an hour long. But it explains how to use it. And mine's kind of old and looks terrible, but it's clean and it, it works. And I'll show you how to take a reading. And what that does is it, it measures the specific gravity of the wine. The instructions tell, tell you to measure it now. Um, I'm not going to do it, okay? Um, it's going to come out and it's going to read a number. It's probably going to be somewhere around 1.080 on the, on the side of the little glass um, hydrometer that I just showed you. And that's what it... And it says, and it says to write it down and, you know, you can do that, but I never do. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It's going to work no matter what. That's only if you want to know the exact, you know, exact alcohol percentage of your wine. So the first few times you make it, you might want to do what they say, you know. Um, but after a while, you just don't care. You just keep making it the same way every time and it comes out the same way. It's very reliable. It's very consistent from batch to batch. Kind of not like beer. Beers kind of can be temperamental. This is just like... It just does what it does. Okay, so that's it for this section or segment of making wine. When this is done fermenting, I will take you through the next steps, which involves another week or two or three of siphoning it and messing with it and just letting it sit and clear and stuff like that. It's very easy. It doesn't take very long. And every, pro every process that you do with it um, takes about, from here on, takes about five minutes. Okay, so it's just simple. Anyways, I will put a link to those, that 
next part down below when it when it occurs. And uh, thank you for being along for the ride here on Craig Tube. Enjoy your home brewing, and don't forget to collect some bottles. Okay. Thanks for watching, everybody. Take care, be safe, and we'll see you real soon. Cheers.